Okay. Um, today we are having a conversation with uh, Mr. Jonas Johnson, uh, founder and partner of Stella Futura. Uh, Jonas also happens to be one of our keynote speakers for the upcoming Sustainable Energy and Transport uh, Summit. Uh, but before we start, you asked me to share, to play a video. So let me share my screen and do that immediately. More and more people live in cities. By 2030, 60% of the world's population will live their lives in urban environments. We need to change and foster change in order to act on new and greater needs. We need to find smarter solutions and better ways to build cities where both the people and planet can thrive. It's quite clear what we have to do. We have to change and truly focus on a number of areas that are attracting increasing attention across the globe. In this, we need to be humble, to learn and listen to those who have something to share. But we also need to be braver than ever before, daring to invest in new, unexplored paths going forward. The city of Helsingborg just took a stand. Over three years, we will make an investment of a type that Sweden has never seen before, allocating earmarked resources to all departments in our city. These resources can only be used for one thing, innovation. To test new tools and techniques, forge new paths, and collaborate with parties outside the organization. Now we're looking for others to join us on this journey. The ones with the ideas, the disruptors, the ones who want to drive change and make a difference. The brave, the bold, and why not the crazy ones? Because the companies and organizations that lead their industries forward also shape our lives in the city. In 2022, all this work will be showcased in a city expo that puts the best innovations on display, that raises the sharpest questions, and invites participants to explore and take part in new urban designs. All the things that come together to compose life in the city. In 1955, one million people visited the Design Expo H55. In 1999, 400,000 came to the Housing Expo H99. Now we're setting our sights on H22, a city expo exploring a smarter and more sustainable urban development and city life. This is our next step. What's yours? Welcome to join our journey and welcome to H22. Right. That was very interesting. Yeah, that is a fantastic project that has been uh, developed uh, the past three years. Um, so, um, uh, where I'm coming from, uh, beside Sweden, um, it's um, in, in the um, communication industry and also as a consultant for city development and programs uh, uh, that is focused on how people um, can obtain a certain living standard and also get access to a lot of uh, tech, but also um, and the um, enjoy their like um, the city governments not governance programs that is run in many of the cities, especially this one as was pointed in the video, which is Helsingborg in the south of Sweden, a city of about um, one hundred thousand uh, people, and uh, it's going fast. So they decided um, to to uh, run a large program that that supports a vision and vision 2035 so where will where will we be with our city in um, in about 20 to 15 15 to 20 years time okay. so i was um, um, contacted and um, won an, a tender for this um, pre-study and also the concept development of such a program called H22, which is uh, basically an event coming up in, in the year 2022, uh, showing and supporting the uh, citizens in, in Helsingborg, what has been done according to 
all the programs that the city government governance has put up as targets uh, for a better living in the city. Okay. Um, what is sustainability to you? Or what is sustainability? Yeah, it's it's a very good question. Sustainability for me is is a complex uh, it's a complex word actually. Um, for me, it's um, especially when it comes to financing and funding of sustainable ideas and sustainable programs. Uh, that is that is really a, a key is issue into this word sustainability because. What, what we often see or often uh, experience is that uh, everything when it comes to sustainability has a cost and and you don't see all every time the benefits that comes out of sustainable uh, for example sustainable investments in a city where and that can be um, de developing of, of uh, uh, playgrounds and areas between the cities can also be uh, sustainable development of schools and infrastructure pro pro uh, programs etc and often we end up with something called smarter cities and you 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 uh, add tech to the solutions and all of a sudden the investment starts running in and they are very tech focused on the other hand uh, you talk about environmental and and uh, sustainable cities one and often that comes with with some kind of environmental focus um, we have this cities in the south of germany for example tubing and freiburg and and cities like that a lot of green focus which is perfect and they have come come uh, quite far for me sustainability is when you combine these um, two aspects of, of tech development green development and add sustainable financing solutions to it so that you produce locally you you get the money to stay locally and more people get share the revenue out of this both revenue and also the benefits out of a, a sustainable development um, so that's sustainability for me um, I am, i'm quite interested in the video because uh Africa as a continent, uh, we are rapidly urbanizing. I think we are the most urbanizing continent currently in the world. Number two, our population is also exploding. Yeah. And number three, it is also predominantly young. So the idea of sustainable cities is a very vital one for us. But how different uh, is a sustainable city from one that is not sustainable mm. in reality? Well, I didn't mention the key component for uh, actually being able to, to take the step and call something a sustainable, well, city or area or okay. city development program or whatever. It takes quite some bold decision and really, really strong city uh, develop, uh, sorry, um, uh, governance in a city or in a region to dare to do those decisions to actually make it uh, uh, into a sustainable program. But, but by, by, by having said that is that there, there needs to be somebody uh, some politician, but also in a cooperation with companies and, and the developer, tech developing companies that can really act together and, and form this environment. So the, the big difference between the successful city development uh, is where there is a, a mayor or politician that is really strong, really bold, really dare to challenge the systems. The, also all types of systems and i think that is a big challenge globally okay so how is the hessen book different in that context is it that you happen to be producing 
a number of politicians involved because uh, from the presentation we saw this is the first time something like this has been done. I saw 1955, 1999, and then we are talking about 2022. Mm. What's the secret behind producing this kind of leaders? Um, this, the secret behind, uh, as I said, I think the, the decision maker in, a, in, this, in this particular city, if we just talk about the city of Helsingborg, is that they have a joint, they have a joint vis vision where they want to go. They know where they want to go. And that goes both from the left to the right wing when it comes to the, to the whole political landscape. Everybody in the city supports where we are going. Then there can be different projects and different steps of court. You can you can work with, with different programs. Um, not necessarily everybody needs to support each uh, on the small steps, but everybody is, is joining uh, forces and they don't um, uh, fight each other's ideas, so they have a joint vision. I think uh, just if, you, if, if you don't have that, you shouldn't spend time and money uh, from taxpayers' pockets and try to be sustainable or try to work on a on a something that uh, that that looks looks sustainable it needs to be really solid uh work from from everyone actually so is it, is it economically beneficial this is all sustainability let's say i'm i want to do a sustainable city mm. is it economically beneficial because in our part of the world uh, or in my part of the world sorry and by that I mean Africa. Well, we don't have so much money. I'm talking about the citizens, the average citizen. We are thinking about survival. Yeah. Why should we now worry about? We are looking for a place to uh, for shelter. We are looking for food. We are looking for I mean, basic things, necessity of life, necessity of life. Why uh, should uh, we bother uh, our head about sustainable yeah. whatever? Well, if we start, if we start with uh, a lot of programs in this city that it, that it comes with no cost at all it's just great great ideas that can be shared in a local community for example fighting violence uh, because a city like Helsingborg they have a budget or uh, to 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 have security in an area for example so the cost of security is very high but if they turn the things around and work with the with the local community the people the youngsters in, in different kind of programs, they can fight crime and they can lower costs. Okay. And the cost to, to run the program is close to zero and the savings for someone like the city or the community uh, or, or, or the, um, the people living there is, is very high. So if you start there, that everybody can afford doing such things. For, for, for me or in this, scope of Helsingborg which is called a smarter city it's not just called smart cities and it's just not called sustainable city it's a it's a it's a higher layer of sustainability where where a lot of those programs also comes moving from that to another part it's um, waste management uh, taking care of energy support that is infrastructure that is uh, comes with with costs yes for sure so to, to run those kind of, of programs, uh, it's a different story. Um, so you should, I think, start with, for example, transfer from, from uh, fossil fuel to renewable energy, because that is completely savings. It's good for the environment and it's savings also for, for, for the pocket. Um, every kilowatt hour produced from renewable energy uh, whether it's solar or wind or even storage nowadays is cheaper than the the, the fossil fuel solutions. Okay. So, um, how did you get into this space, this sustainable sustainability space? Because from your uh, introduction, you did say that we are into communications and events. Uh, and also investing. How did you get into the whole? Yeah, yeah. I I uh, I was coming from 
the communication business and and uh, all other industries as well and i've um i, I sold the company I, I moved into to to the renewable energy mainly because i had a lot of communication job where sustainability and uh, doing good for the society uh, was more and more and more um, essential for for this brand and this communication so so going from just doing advertising or marketing to actually add both time and money into doing good somewhere became more and more relevant for all my clients uh, of course i needed to learn more about the the sustainable uh, different types of sustainable work we could do uh, and uh, everything ends up with getting um, energy support, uh, like, like the base, base and fundamental support to a society is having accessible, uh, affordable, stable, reliable energy support. Uh, accessible, affordable, stable, reliable energy support. Yeah, yeah. These are four very interesting choice of ways. And, and 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 everybody knows that you can't just go to renewable i think the mix and 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 the the cooperation between the the different type of sources energy supply is, is key and um, um but i went to myself and 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 said what what, what type of things do i want to do the, the 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 next 20 years of my professional life and that is try to, to make this sustainable energy support also affordable. So I can use my knowledge about how to fund things, how to fundraise uh, sustainable and, and impact um, projects and try to make them very, very um, attractive for any off taker uh, and lower the, the hurdle of taking a decision such as going for renewable energy, a rooftop installation in an area of, of Spintex Road, for example, in Accra, um, is now happening. And, and uh, everybody could, will soon also see the result. They will save money. It will be good for the environment. And we will add communication possibilities for, for those who change into uh, this type of, of energy support. So now that you're talking about Stella, uh, is it the basis behind Stella? How did the Stella, uh, the Stella Futura story evolve? So Stella Futura, first of all, Stella means star. It's our Latin oh, okay. word of sun. Uh, so, so to use the, the, the sun and the energy of the sun to create uh, business opportunities and to, to do better things in a society is the meaning of, of the world of Stella Futura, the future star. But okay. it's also to, to employ young talents, low, uh, not, not necessarily a Swedish young talent, but a Ghanaian young talent. Uh, hopefully uh, we can attract female engineers to see their life uh, in the renewable energy sector, but also become um, businessmen and they can, they can sort of run their own from uh, the, their own business as well uh, in, in the partnership with us. So be, be able to, to, to give back more to the society still under a, a structure where there is not, it's, it's for profit. It's a, it's a company that, that should, should make money and it should pay tax in, in Ghana and it should develop and be, grow bigger and attract more people to come and, and join us and work with us. So wh wh why, uh... Africa, in Ghana or whatever? Well, it, it started with um, connections uh, and when you meet people that is really passionate about uh, their life and the possibilities to change, um, I, I will just tell, I just fell in love with the idea of, of also doing this type of things in Ghana rather than in other countries uh, in, the, in the neighborhood and, and or here in Sweden. So we, we started in Ghana and then it has been more tractions from other, uh, other places as well. 
And in Stella now also have installations in Somalia, we have installations in the neighboring countries and, and, and um, coming up with, with installation now in, in, uh, in Ghana as, as uh, having that as a hub for, for development of the, this new technology uh, when it comes to energy storage solution mainly, and then also add solar and, and system design knowledge to, to the region. Um, so knowledge transfer, I would say also is another key element and a key passion to share rather than to keep, keep the knowledge for yourself. So um, uh, when it comes to Stella, how do you see the African energy market? Well, in it's in the, it's it's very Africa is big. It's many countries. It's it's very a lot to okay. to start somewhere. Um, <clears throat> we've spent. Mm, thousands of hours now in the team learning uh, reg rules and regulations and regulatory issues uh, and it's not more complex uh, um, in Africa it's sometimes easier than, than here in in this region of the Nordics which is very That's regular. very competitive. Yeah so it's 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 a it's a very positive thing um, and then the, there is other things that it, that is, um, you have about two times more uh, sunshine per day than we have. Okay. Um, parts of, of, of uh, the neighboring countries or in the north of Ghana, there is even more. So sometimes you can end up in three or four times more sun per day than we have in the Nordics. And still, uh, it's not been used that much. It hasn't really came, uh, came that far in uh, implementing into the society, into the manufacturing industry, for example, the C and I segment, or what that we are focused on, and also of, yeah. hospitals, which is a um, very focused area for us. Why, why do you think uh, that is the case? I think uh, our use of solar, I think I'm gonna, is mm -hmm. so relatively so low. First of all, the, we need to find the combination of an, a need, uh, somebody who wants to buy this equipment or get access to this equipment. And then we need somebody to pay for it or finance it, a business model that works, that is according to all the regulations, as well as affordable for the off taker and gets the revenue back to the investor. And that hasn't really been so successful uh, as it is now. The model we are using and we have developed with, with uh, some partners are very uh, attractive, uh, we can see. And I think um, it's just the timing is, is, is now. Uh, um, cost for hardware has gone down. Um, the sun almost always shine the 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 the, 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 the uh, all the possibilities are there and also the, the countries are developing and uh, the need of more energy the need of accessible cheaper energy stable energy uh, has also become uh, higher and higher so 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 let's say I'm an, uh, a commercial industrial user of uh, energy can we take a short break? I need to get access to uh, um, more energy to the computer. <laughs> okay, I'll pause. You repeat the question, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I was saying that, uh, for example, I am an industrial user of energy. Mm. Uh, obviously, if I'm in Ghana, I'm paying the commercial rates for energy, mm. what will be your uh, proposition to me? Why should I, instead of buying energy from the grid, uh, go for, let's say, this solar system being offered by Stella? Mm. As a commercial, commercial actor. Yeah. Why? Yeah. What is the benefit? Well, uh, the first, first of all, we only offer savings. There is not like, 
hey, you have to buy this equipment because we have realized that no one wants actually want to buy another PV panel. They don't necessarily want to buy a battery to stabilize or to, to stabilize the grid, or they don't want to buy a battery to have as a fuel saving device for their diesel generator. If you are having a diesel genset uh, working 24 seven, for example. Um, so we offer a financing solution, which is a partnership together with the uh, equipment needed. Often it's a, very often it's a PV panel rooftop installation together with a, an inverter that controls everything. And then uh, some of the clients, it will be announced. We have one uh, tender now where we can include, in, we will in, include, include also a battery uh, package that will provide a very 100% stable energy, even if there is blackouts, long blackouts, for example, uh, for a um, certain type of production, a laboratory, <clears throat> cooling vaccine equipment like that, that, that really is sensitive. <clears throat> if you add those hardware costs together and you, <clears throat> sorry, you split them over 10, 12, 15 to 20 years, you can of course add this into two types of contracts. Either you pay per kilowatt hour a lower tariff than you have from before, or you have a, a higher purchase agreement where you, you set up a certain time of 10 to 15 years and then you, you, you use all the energy that comes from this and after 15 years, for example, it's yours. So it will be handled over <clears throat> in, in a very smooth way. So, so for you then, as a, as a uh, businessman uh, running this business, you don't have to bother about anything. It's, well, you will get a certain amount of energy every day cheaper than the energy supported from the grid. So that, that means that uh, as a, an, a, a commercial or industrial consumer, I am not going to pay a bulk sum for, <laughs> let's say, a solar system with the inverters and everything for my factory. I will contract you to sell me power if you're looking for the kilowatt hour model, for example, at sure. a cheaper rate than the grid. Sure. Always. <clears throat> okay. So if I, if, if I, if I was paying, let's say, $100 a month, maybe you can tell me, you can give it to me $70 per month or so. Is, 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 is that the model? <clears throat> yeah, you will. You will have. Uh, uh, we will design a system that serves you enough energy uh, for your roof. If, if your roof is is too big, then you don't have to use the whole roof. Or if 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 the roof is small, we use all the roof, and at, at least we can add um, some some savings to your energy bill. Uh, so we can maximize the use of the roof to to to, to get uh, you lower energy bills. Um, and and um, a few of, of our clients, they have have uh, difficulties um, measuring uh, their building. So we have a measurement tool, a software, where we install meters uh, for water, for cleaning, for temperature, for uh, energy production, uh, energy consumption. Um, the digital gensets, how much do you get from them? Uh, you can compare this data with the bills for, for fuel, for example, to see if there is any, um, if there is any le leakage somewhere or if, <laughs> or if they are efficient, for example. Okay. Uh, so uh, all this will be provided in a, in a software tool where you can monitor your energy system including water and water purification and cleaning so that there is a complete system for that for the investor they would like to see how much impact or how much um, benefits will this be also for from the investors investors perspective and um, what do we give back also to the society when it comes to impact have we hired any 
local people? Have we uh, saved uh, CO2 uh, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So the system and will also provide you and the investor with re a report, which is um, a unique product on the market. So, so therefore, uh, as, a, as a, a commercial uh, user of your, your solution, for example, yeah. this report can then form part of my marketing to uh, communications. Because I can exactly. say, that, oh, now we are sustainable, we are saving so and so amount of carbon dioxide. And, uh, what and you don't have to spend one minute on the report. You will get it. You, we will help you. I have 20 years as a communication manager for many, many companies and I run this type of, type of business myself and we have gathered also people like that to not only provide energy to, to, to the client but to add communication possibilities for, for our clients. So, so, so you're actually doing a value add? Or, yeah, energy as a service. Okay, that, that, that's value. quite expensive. But then other side also that uh, I want to develop a bit of is uh, you did speak about uh, the financing aspect. It's, it sounds to me that you are saying that when you, let's say, if I was contracting you as a CNN uh, consumer of energy, you will also come with your own financing for the project. Yeah. So I don't have to look for money. How does that work? How does that work? Can you, can you elaborate a bit? Um, a lot of um, the investment uh, funds, all the, all the, I would say the, everything when it, when it comes to uh, sustainable investments uh, has moved from, in the, especially in the energy sector, has moved to make more impact where you invest your money. So, um, for example, in, in Sweden, in Norway, in Finland, Denmark, there is a ban of funds investing, for example, in fossil fuel, coal, etc. Is it after a ban? Yeah, they, they can't do it. It's not allowed. So a lot of these funds now needs to find markets and off takers who wants to go for solar, for example, or wind. Um, energy storage solutions. So that has happened right now. So we can, we can use the, 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 the positive um, uh, winds, I would say, the warm winds that comes also from the investment uh, community. Uh, uh, society yeah? and, and then bring it to countries like Ghana, who is quite well developed, I would say, and ready to, to accept this uh, sort of financing solution. Um, so we add, add then a company structure which is then local so people and, and money will be invested locally and everything will be also in a sustainable way more profitable uh, in, the, in the area where we, where we work and, and invest. Okay uh, and when you say that money will be invested locally what, what does that mean because um, I know you are Swedish. Yeah, uh, your organization is Swedish. Uh, you have uh, like a Ghanaian subsidiary, and I know that you're also expanding to other African countries. So let's just give us an example. When you say that the money will be invested, reuse here locally. What, what, what does that mean? Uh, money will be re invested in a Ghanaian uh, company that is actually selling energy to the off taker. For you as a, as a as a as a businessman, uh, you run a factory. You will buy energy from a local company, which we set up to to do these kind of installations. And then we will be hiring people locally. We will be paying tax locally, and the it will benefit the local Ghanaian company of Stella as well, because that is a, an EPC company who will be running their business um, in the country or in the neighboring country. So, so, so does that mean that uh, the company, the, the Lucas Stella branch has Ghanaian shareholders? Sure. Oh, okay. Now, uh, what you have described to me uh, sounds very uh, fantastic because I know that uh, a lot of 
one of the major barriers to adoption of uh, solar systems is uh, the upfront cost, the upfront installation cost. Yes. So how has been your experience in the Ghanaian market since you started? Uh, have, have the market responded in the way that you expected? Uh, yes, it has responded the way we expected. It is, um, uh, it, it's quite a new experience for many uh, people to, 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 to rethink and try to see if, if uh, renewable energy would be anything for, for, for them. Um, but it's the same everywhere, I would say. Uh, beside a few places in the world, like California, um, yeah, a few places in the world where that sort of uh, level is very, very low now. So Ghana responds well to these um, proposals, uh, especially when they don't need to put the, any cost on their CapEx side, which is, of course, a very big hurdle. Yeah. You don't need to spend one million dollar or hundred thousand dollars in from their capex in in investing in in an energy solution. So it will be totally coming from the operational expenses side, which is helps a lot. Sorry, and then, yeah, and then there is decision making. Of course, uh, you need to gather the board. You need to gather people and. And the knowledge is quite low, uh, but it's the same uh, even here in Sweden. It, the knowledge is quite low. So to take these decisions uh, takes a little time, but eventually um, the off taker really understands that, that uh, there is no risk for me. I will get a certain amount of cheaper energy. And when you have access to that, of course, um, I would say within two, three, four years, and the energy need will also be higher because you've saved money, but also you maybe have expanded your business. Mm -hmm. So hopefully that could come along with new installations and, and, and then you can start uh, small and you can scale up. It's okay. possible too. So, so in, 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 in this context, how do you solve the knowledge uh, gap barrier? Yeah, proof of concept showing uh, installation is up and running, for example, at a hospital or for example, at a manufacturing business in, in the Spintex area. Um, share knowledge, share, share experiences. And uh, we are not bringing uh, some kind of secondhand or, or um, cheap produced energy technology. We are bringing, in this case, uh, Swedish German manufactured uh, PVs and batteries. Um, it's it's uh, now a combination of Swedish German and Ghanaian uh, design team designing the system, uh, getting it work to work together, and then it has to be applied. Uh, and people will, will of course be able to see and and and. Uh, and, and we can share the data, we can share the success that, that's coming from, from savings mainly. Um, yeah. And of course, other benefits. Um, it, but it takes time, that's for sure. So, 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 so uh, let me ask a, a, a personal question here. Uh, so some of these success stories, are we going to hear about them in the Sustainable Energy and Future Summit? Sure. We'll talk about sure. some of these uh, data points. Yeah, there will be definitely sharing of these kind of, of success. And, and we have installations in Norway, there is installations uh, other parts where we can, can talk about fuel saving devices, where there is off-grid installations with only diesel generators, um, where we add batteries in order to just save fuels. And the savings are fantastic. You can add a a battery solution of about $100,000 um, cost and the payback time is less than two years, only in fuel saving. Okay. But the consumer will see savings from day one because of the business that you're running. Sure. The consumer don't need to buy the equipment, but they will sh sh have savings from day one. <coughs> okay. So let me, ask, let me put you on the spot here. Uh, why Ghana? 
as, as a, the first state. Why not a country like Nigeria? Because uh, I'm asking that because uh, of two data points. First of all, mm -hmm. Ghana, we have 84% penetration when it comes to electricity availability. Number one. And number two, we actually have excess generation capacity. All those 60 pounds are excess. As in, we need around 2.7 gigawatts and we produce around 4 points. We have installed capacity for 4.7 gigawatts or so. Okay, the only downside to that is that 60% of that installed capacity is thermal. out. But Nigeria, for example, I don't know, I think they are like 55, 60 percent penetration and they need like 21 gigawatts, but they produce, let's call it uh, 4 gigawatts or so on average. Mm -hmm. And their population is, I don't know, they are about around 200 million, Ghana we are 30 million. So in all respect, Nigeria seems to be a bigger market sure. uh, for this solution. But, other than but think, yeah, that's true. But don't uh, remember where we come from. We come from a small country where, where sustainability and where, where you do most value for the time spent and, and the effort spent into this is more important than than actually going to a bigger bigger market yeah. for us as, an, as a startup which now has grown to more than 20 people which will grow quite fast ghana is big enough the environment in ghana is fantastic uh, the people are friendly the system works a lot of a lot of things okay. are extremely good and and and, and a perfect start for us in, in a, an environment like um, Sub-Saharan Africa. So I think we are, Ghana is a little bit ready for us and we are ready for Ghana. And we have partnerships established in Ghana. We have people on the ground who knows the local mindset, uh, language, uh, they have the connections that can, can um, be the, pro, the, 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 the length of this uh, idea coming from, from Stockholm, Sweden and, and established itself in, in Accra. Um, I don't think yet that we are ready to, to do the same thing in Nigeria, but eventually from our office, from the people that will be the best one in Africa in energy design and energy system implementation, the absolute highest competence in the whole African region will be in the base that we will establish in, Ga in Ghana. So they could probably grow from there into, into uh, Nigeria, for example. Okay. But well, it's not part of the strategy yet, so. Uh, so so I, 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 I do get that. So um, what was the most surprising thing for you uh, in terms of working on in Ghana, when you came to Ghana, what was the most surprising thing about the business environment? I, I, I didn't what, hear the question. What was, this is more like a, a personal question. Uh, what was the most surprising thing for you? You know, it's a different culture. It's a, it's, a, it's a different group of people who are used to doing things in a different way. So as a, as a, a Swedish man who is coming, I don't know whether the first time you came to uh, Ghana, for example, was when you were staying at Stella. Mm. Yeah, sure. First of all, we met with a delegation from Ghana coming to Sweden to learn more about energy, energy support, uh, different types of technology, uh, water purification, a lot of different uh, scopes. Uh, waste management and, and things. So they met the founder of founder of uh, Stella, which is, what, which is, uh, which is uh, Ulrika Tunerefeld. Mm -hmm. She um, have a background in engineering, technical, uh, chemical engineering, uh, energy storage uh, solutions. And um, Where is the, one, yeah, so the discussion um, started there and they uh, developed that kind of uh, friendship and partnership and discussions about uh, how to how to start and where to start and and it, it 
so after one year, about one and a half year, we also met with a Canadian Swedish young lovely lady called Nikki Johnson. She's a partner now. She's li she's living in Accra. Her mother is from Sweden. Her father is a doctor from Ghana. Uh, and uh, we met with her and we immediately felt that this is going to be just a perfect match. She, she wants to do this uh, full time and uh, f the rest is history. So she's been in the company s since start and uh, uh, are part of the management team and run the business uh, together with her colleagues in, in Accra. Um, and you would imagine yourself, uh, the two of us meeting now, and then you decide to, to start something in, in Sweden. But before we have met and before you, you start developing the idea and how, how it could be feasible, and you don't have any connections, then it's quite hard to just stand. Um, yeah, take off from, from, from landing and just start your business. It's, it would be close to impossible. I do get it. I do get it. Anyway, um... Thank you very much for uh, giving us your time. Thank you. Um, the, the stuff that you are doing uh, clearly, it has a lot of very sustainable development goals. But interestingly, I noticed that you never gave any of them as a reason for your clients to go uh, use renewable, renewable energy solutions. I wonder whether there's a reason for that. Well, there is, I would say from the, from the start, um, the decision comes normally from, will this be good for my business from the off taker side? And if we can add savings only savings you couldn't find them on the sdg on the 17 sdgs but you can find renewable energy you can find local employees and then you can find um uh, co2 savings or you can find uh, poverty uh, reduction yeah exactly you can find a lot of these things uh, and they are, of course, key drivers for us. But in the communication, we start with giving energy as a service to support the, the people, the manufacturers, the CNI segments, the hospitals. Um, I would say from 100 kilowatts and up to five, 510 megawatts is the, the average size we can uh, we, we will handle. And um, to, to add this um, saving uh, to them, and then we can start providing these clients with the communication tools so they can communicate other impacts they've done as well as for the investors so from the investors perspective we have traction from those who wants to deliver four or five or six of the sdgs and they have that as a criteria and uh, we we can support i would say close to 7, 13, 14 or 15 of these SDGs if you invest with us and we, we uh, support a uh, hospital for a safe and reliable energy. Um, so I, I just realized that, uh, sorry, we're going to win now, but there's some things keep, keep coming up. I just realized that uh, you keep mentioning hospitals a lot. Sure. Uh, it, it keeps coming up. Why? why? Why are you so much interested in hospitals for these systems? May, there is many reasons, but if you start also from the financial part, the hospital has very severe high costs for energy. And energy costs, so instead of, instead of saving, I would say, 20, 30, 40 to 50 percent of the energy costs. They could spend that money on medicals. They could spend it on more doctors or spend it on better things than fuel or, or, or uh, dirty energy or poor energy support. Uh, a lot of this money 
Sometimes in Ghana there is difference, but in, in, in many areas there is aid organizations, there is other support organizations, uh, the churches, for example, um, that, that sort of pays for these energy bills or pay for the doctor's salary or, or the medicine. Uh, so we would like to, to change that so they can save money and do better things uh, for their business. Um, also, there is uh, sometimes weak support of energy. So there is uh, blackouts uh, and uh, we know uh, from yeah. experience. We no, still do have back out sometimes. People dying. Yeah, people are are, are dying uh, at the hospital sometimes because of this cost or, or energy support. That's a very high price. It's a very, very high price. And then we know also that there is a lot of vaccines that has to be thrown away. Expensive medic medicine that has to be thrown away because uh, hospitals can't keep them cool at night. Oh. Um, so for us, it's a very simple business model. Uh, there is funding who would love to support those kind of activities. Um, the problem for some of the hospitals is that they have difficulties um, showing an audit report, you know, an annual audit report from a, an auditor, uh, um, a, an audit firm that is... Uh, respected or uh, uh, from the investor side so we have uh, now managed and tried to bridge that gap uh, how well you can i can't tell you how but i uh, i, I uh, <laughs> that is part of our our uh, business, a business uh, a model take it soft. i get that what about uh, what i meant by that question is uh, it seems that um, you have a very good solution, but for somebody to assess this service, the person might also bring something to the table, which is uh, records that have been validated. Mm. Is that also? So, okay, let, let me go back to my example. Let's say I'm a commercial and industrial user of energy or yeah. And you came to talk to me about your solutions and I'm interested. What do I have to bring? You, you have to share your data. You have to open up. Uh, this is my consumption. This is how I, I will run in my business. Here is my issues. You have to share the, the, the um, part of the information we need or the investors need is uh, how does the annual report look like? Are you bankable? Are you are you doing? Are you paying your bills and are you you making profit in in a way? So to show that you are bankable is a key for at least some of the investors. That has been the main issue I can tell you, for many years. And uh, secondly, uh, or last but not least, we have to to present that. Um, you as a manufacturer actually own the land or, or, or you own the building that we are going to put uh, an installation uh, at your roof. So if anything happens, we want to be quite clear that the installation is not, it's actually not yours. You are just giving, getting savings from an from a installation that is owned by uh, uh, a company that has the licenses to sell a wholesale license to for energy for example uh, when when that that contract is uh, ends after 10 12 15 or 20 years then the the um, equipment, equipment be, becomes the original becomes yours. Mm. okay let, 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 let me unpack that yeah why do, do I have to own the lamp that the equipment is installed on? It has to be at least a clear, uh, it has to be stated, it has to be clear who owns the land. So it, we, we need to, to make sure uh, the investors need to know, uh, what, is there any risk with this site? Could, could, it, could it happen that somebody take the building down and, and build a road, for example? Oh, okay, okay, uh, okay. Yeah, 
because then we need to take the equipment down, which comes at the cost. Okay. And then all of a sudden, the, yeah. So that's that's the, there is a few of those uh, things. So so, that, so, so, so in other words, uh, you wanted clarity of ownership. Yeah. Not yeah. necessarily that uh, the final consumer owns the land per se, but maybe somebody else may even own the land, but the person, uh, the uh, final consumer has access to that land, and yeah. the person ha they are, they are, can show proof of agreement. Hmm. It is also. Uh, the, the corollary of that is that, you know, businesses are dynamic, as we are aware. Yeah. Maybe uh, for now, I have this site that I'm running, and this is where you have installed uh, this uh, solar system. But then in five or 10 years' time, we decided to move. Mm -hmm. What is the implication? Does that mean that we, we have to uproot everything and move to the new site? Does a contract that we may have to sign, does it make provision for changes like this? It could be, it could be uh, if every if every everybody is open minded and, and tell tell about those plans, for example, if there is a plan, then it could be stated in the contract. It could be stated in the contract what happens then after ten years if you have to move everything. Um, of, often it has happened that. Uh, we have, don't have that uh, own experience in Ghana, but it, our team has this and from, from other contracts that's been signed. And after 10 years, businesses are growing so fast, so, so that you need to move to another site and uh, run, run the business from a new site. Um, then the, the relation can stay and be yeah, refinancing solution or be contracted to a new off taker taking over the plan. Um, and you can of course bring your your um, partnership to the to the new site and start develop a new, new uh, partnership together with an, in a new contract. I would say that there is a standard solution for this, but at least stated in the contracts where what happens if you need to move. And the, the before the contract ends. Okay. Uh, then, uh, you, do, you talk about uh, annual reports and consumption reports. Uh, in Ghana, I'm sure that you have realized by now that we are very bad with records. So, if you come to me, the average. Uh, business, I'm saying that if you come to me, sorry, uh, my 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 first kids. Or just came in the last second. Yeah, uh, I'm saying that if you come to me, okay, and you ask me for a report on my energy usage, 70% of the time, there will be no data. No other there is some, there is absolutely no data or no report. What we may be able to present to you will maybe. Uh, energy bills that we are paying over time, and that one, yeah. that even that one may be scattered all over the map. Maybe they will give you receipts and all that. So in a situation like that, where there's no previous history, and we also want the project to start as quick as possible, what do you do? Do you use your this is software you spoke about earlier, or I mean, what, what was the solution in that particular instance? Yeah, the solution. Uh, the solution. Uh, there are many ways to work around that, but at least to give a clear picture of the daily consumption, the the, the nighttime consumption, or what happens in the weekends if you don't um, have any manufacturing in the weekends, for example. What the all, all that data could be measured. I would say within two, three weeks, with uh, installer, you install a software. Or, or, or several devices. Uh, you also, we also measure the grid quality, the quality of, of the grid in the area. It can vary from, from an area in, in Accra where you can find um, Korlebu Hospital, for example. Uh, in that area, it's a quite weak uh, um, grid. And in another area, uh, closer to uh, at Spintex Road, Further, further, further away, there is quite a strong um, 
Um, so the, the frequencies are stable. Uh, and then we can also do the design uh, in that area and also get the data to, to tell you this is the size of the system that will be more most beneficial for for both you and us. Okay. We, you, you, you wouldn't you wouldn't like to oversize the system so that the production is more than you use, of course. Uh, within a couple of years or three, you will have meters right, that can actually collect data and sell the energy cell back to the system that we are using. Uh, so that's an um, interesting uh, uh, We will of course already install such a solution from the start so that it could be able to do that in the, in the when, when everybody's ready. issues in Ghana is done with their work. Okay, um, so that, that is very clear. Now let's just come talk about the annual reports. Uh, I, have, I have difficulties to hear what your, your questions. I'm saying that uh, let's talk about the the business reports. So we are talking about the income statements, the uh, balance sheets, and mm -hmm. cash flow statements. Of these three, which one are you interested in? Are you interested in all of them or? It, it, it depends, yeah, but but uh, as much as much in, it's as much information as possible. Reports, paper, financing, solution. The, the, the more reports, the, the the clearer view of your financial stability, the lower risks and and saves. So that if we can offer for energy solutions. That's that's a general. Uh, uh, investment uh, policy, I would say. So, so what happens uh, in the case where uh, the business doesn't have any? Sorry. Or what happens when the business doesn't have any or good financial records? So the business is a going concern. When you go, you do uh, an audit on them. You realize that yes, it's actually a, a real business. Mm -hmm. They um as uh, they are producing or selling actual goods to real customers, and they seem to be making enough returns on each transaction. However, their financial statements happen to be spotty. I'm asking this because, uh, for example, we had a financial an issue with our banking sector recently. One of the things that uh, reviewed is how people in the, the banks are actually playing with their books mm. okay mm -hmm. those are the banks mm. that are, are regulated how much more private industry where there's not as much oversight mm. i'm wondering how you you you, you can go around that it it would be it would be wrong actually for me to answer the question right now because that as that is a decision that I am taking together with my colleagues and also the financing uh, partner that we have. So if if there is an issue like that, or we'll show that there is an. It will be a case by case basis. It will be definitely a case by case basis. Yes. Oh, okay. So, I think I think. Uh, that is uh, fantastic. I, I think that a lot of uh, our C uh, CNI people who watch this uh, will be very interested, and I'm sure that we will see a lot of them at the the Sustainable Energy and Transport Summit. Yeah. Yeah. Sure. I I, I would I would uh, after after spending now the past two years in travel back and forth to to ghana i wouldn't i wouldn't wait I, of course it would be wrong for me to say anything else but i wouldn't wait one single day before installing at least some part of the roof uh, area with solar 
and if I have diesel generators, I would I would tomorrow go for an energy battery fuel saving solution because you can you can make even more savings uh, with that combination. Uh, so that's that's um, a really interesting market that comes has now we have brought that to to Ghana and we will we will position ourselves as the the company that really support uh, energy as a service and provide these off takers with solutions that they can save uh, sure. not only money but also environment let me ask a question so for mm. example uh, you, you, you just mentioned generators so let's say i have a generator yeah uh, I, don't know, I don't know maybe 500 kv mm. generator just by the generator alone can you be able to reduce the equivalent uh, solar battery system that I would need to replace that? It can, it, only, it, can, it can always be replaced, but it's not necessarily the solution. Uh, and, and it has to be also case by case. Um, there is places, there is places outside Accra where you actually need generators to stabilize the grid otherwise the grid is so weak or, or fluctuations are so high so it it um have a, it damaging effects on the machinery is that it? Exactly. Yeah. The control. and then you can you can have three of those 500 kilowatt generators okay one of them are going 24 7 and a blackout comes and it starts the two other ones Okay. to support the base load for the factory these are the cases where you definitely add a battery system that provides you with uh, not only a lot of savings it can it can really be super good business cases um, there is other solutions where the generator only works as a backup so it starts when 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 the grid fails uh, it could be a instant millisecond uh, uh, solution or it could be uh, that it starts after five two four five six ten seconds or something that is also pe people we visit uh, needs to go out and start the energy manually and here you can add uh, devices so that this works seamlessly um, which you can find it at hotel like kempinski that has severe um, um, issues in the area where 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 you can add. Um, they have an in, they have a UPS uh, solution, so that you when you you don't lose your internet, you don't lose a lot of other things, and the, the computers at the check in uh, always works. For example, uh, it, 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 for, a, for a big yeah. okay. But but anyway, that is um, uh, that is uh, also design work, and it's a case by case. Uh, okay. Uh, Basis. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I think that uh, that's answered a lot of questions uh, mm -hmm. from the customer. And then, uh, of course, this means that you know a lot of churches in Ghana also uh, use generators. Like I know a number of churches, big churches yeah. that. So such people to the same model will apply. Mm -hmm. Sure. So they need to also show you because the churches, I don't know why uh, uh, churches do uh, business uh, reports. So in such an instance, also case by case, is that it? Um, so far, I we haven't um, we haven't talked to that many churches uh, but i know that there is interest from them and in the pipeline because also sometimes there's a church there's a school there's a hospital and they are all like aligned uh, in a way so sure this is uh, super interesting for everyone and uh so i can't tell you if they have audited report like you know, this stage well do you think that it would be, be possible to have a sustainable city without uh, sustainable energy could you repeat the question? Sorry. Do you think it is possible 
to have a sustainable city without having sustainable energy? Oh, I'm not the one to judge, but uh, it sounds like uh, it sounds like uh, it wouldn't be a sustainable city in my view, in my point of view. But sustainable cities is not only energy, of course. Um, there is, I would say the city governance layer is the most important one that it works, that people are aligned, that the government are aligned on where we are going. And it, in, it in t intends to be like this if, if you don't add energy or sustainable energy you wouldn't get aligned on going forward for the future so it has become quite an important piece of the puzzle okay um beside that there is many other issues uh, needs to be solved it could be an open network for data for example the city that we started this conversation with the city of helsingborg mm -hmm. all the documents all the, the the emails all the communications all the decisions are open so you as a citizen in that city could access how really? what yeah, yeah 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 everything is open everything i don't see that happening in africa yeah, I, 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 that's, that was you who said that and um, uh, I would say that every decision everything is completely open even wow. emails yeah that's amazing and imagine imagine the trust between the citizen and the, the decision maker when when approaching a new um development uh, of, a, of a part of a city whatever it you 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 will be 100 percent transparent yeah um because it's your tax money that should do this and it could be external financing solutions for example wow yeah so it's a matter of city governance if you're going to make a, a future sustainable city Anyway, um, before we uh, wrap up, I want to ask you about uh, electrification of transport. Uh, I know that you are doing something with uh, electric bikes. Uh, mm. Can you tell us a bit more? I have an electric bike. <laughs> Company, you mean? Mm, yeah, yeah, and, and, and motorcycles, yeah. yeah. Very good. So, I mean, how did you get into that one also? And can you tell us a bit more about it? I, if I can tell you more about the electric bikes, how do you get into electric bikes, and how come you ended up owning an electric bike company? Oh, um, um, electric. First of all, electric bikes, both bicycles and and motorcycles. They yeah. they are coming quite strong now in Sweden and Norway, uh, where I would say. Norway is a little bit ahead, especially when it comes to cars, but we didn't talk about that now. Yeah. And so, so people want to change moving from A to B, uh, f going from a, a gasoline or a diesel run uh, engine to an electric car or electric bicycle or electric yeah. motorcycle. Um, a lot of this is also a trend, I would say, but it feels very good. It also supports you and helps you with the status in the in the society. If you have that, you are part of the, um, the, the development. Yeah, it's you're part of the development. And people getting questions about is it too expensive or uh, well, what does it uh, really the effect of that engine when they when they manufacture it or what happened with the battery, all the components? Sure, that is a tricky question. And the answer is not easy to say and just pinpoint that this is the way it is. So, but every development, every change into this area will support the next generation and the next 
generation getting better and better and better and better. So for sure, the first diesel engines compared to the one we have now have made a huge progress. Yeah. And the first batteries compared to the one we will have in 10 years or 20 or 30 years time uh, are doing like the same uh, progress, I would say. So being part of that development is that a lot of people here in, in Sweden or in Norway would like to participate in. Yeah. Um, and I think that's why these markets are, are rapidly growing in, 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 in a yeah, sustainable way, which, if you mean by adding electric vehicles in, the, in different areas. Also now they've started with electric airplanes. Yeah. So you could, it's not a commercial yet, but you could would probably within two, three years be able to have this uh, in domestic flights, uh, a few of them, maybe up to tw 20 people with an with a electric airplane. What, what about uh, uh, electric ships? Do you have some in Sweden? Sure. sure. In electric ships uh, are um, like every day you small yeah, the small ones crossing a river, or <coughs> or uh, I would say in Volta there might be some some part of because there, it's it's not offshore. It's not the uh, the, the the there is different regulations here if it's on a river, if it's at the lake, or if it's offshore. So, but but definitely um, you, you would see more and more of of those ferries. You know, uh, in Africa, as since you have the second year, you actually have observed. Uh, but in the cities, uh, like Accra, for example, it's mainly cars and buses. But as in uh, these mini buses that we call the port bus. Yeah. Uh, yeah. But uh, in other cities outside uh, Ghana, and even some Ghanaians, is a few of them. You see that motorbikes are prevalent a lot. And then in the rural areas, too, a lot of cycling goes on. So, how do you see Africa in that context for electric motorcycles and bicycles? Since you're the owner of a, an electric bike company, are you thinking about coming here? Uh, not yet, but I, I think it's a very, very early stage for, for many manufacturers. Uh, I would assume that the cost will come down for uh, for these types of, of um, yeah batteries or en energy solution and also the um, the distance that they can cover from from one charge mm -hmm. to another one. But sure, the infrastructure in a city like Accra or Kumasi, where, where you have access to a lot of renewable energy but also you can access the fast charging solution uh, adding adding uh, different different devices that could work perfectly between shuttle buses between a and b in, in the city between the airport and to, to to a hotel things like that i know that the, the there is projects going on and we've been been asked to 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 look at one of those um and it it, it makes quite a lot of sense, uh, especially if the distance is not so far and you can charge uh, when you are at the airport and then you, you make another way to turn around and then, yeah. So there, there is a future for sure. There is a future for sure. Okay. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Jonas, uh, for the talk. Thank you. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at uh, the SIG Summit. Me too. I'm looking forward to that one. Thank All you. Bye-bye. Right. Bye. -bye. Bye.